Question 1. What is the legal process for resolving a boundary dispute between two neighboring properties in California? A. Mediation. B. Litigation. C. Arbitration. D. Direct negotiation. Answer. B. Litigation. Explanation. In California, boundary disputes between neighboring properties are typically resolved through litigation, where the court determines the legal boundary based on evidence. Question 2. Describe the implications of California's Proposition 65 for commercial property landlords. A. Requirement to disclose environmental hazards. B. Mandate to perform regular property inspections. C. Obligation to provide earthquake-proof buildings. D. Duty to ensure ADA compliance. Answer. A. Requirement to disclose environmental hazards. Explanation. Proposition 65 in California requires commercial property landlords to disclose the presence of known environmental hazards to tenants. Question 3. How does the alquist priolo Earthquake Fault Zoning Act affect real estate transactions in California? A. Prohibits construction near fault lines. B. Requires earthquake insurance for all properties. C. Demands special building codes for seismic areas. D. Mandates disclosure of seismic hazards. Answer. D. Mandates disclosure of seismic hazards. Explanation. The Alquist Priolo Act requires that sellers and real estate agents disclose if properties are located within earthquake fault zones. Question 4. A buyer in California discovers the property they're interested in is in a designated tsunami hazard area. What disclosures are required? A. Tsunami Evacuation Plan B. Properties Tsunami Risk History C. Tsunami Hazard Zone Disclosure D. Previous Tsunami Damages Answer. C. Tsunami Hazard Zone Disclosure Explanation. In California, sellers must disclose if a property is located within a designated tsunami hazard area. Question 5. Discuss the impact of California's Sustainable Groundwater Management Act on property owners with wells. A. Restrictions on well water usage. B. Mandatory well water testing. C. Installation of water saving devices. D. Regular reporting of water usage. Answer. A. Restrictions on well water usage. Explanation. The Sustainable Groundwater Management Act may impose restrictions on groundwater usage for property owners with wells to ensure sustainable water management. Question 6. In a sale of a beachfront property in California, what legal issues arise from the Coastal Commission's jurisdiction? A. Building restrictions. B. Mandatory flood insurance. C. Public access requirements. D. Coastal development permits. Answer. D. Coastal Development Permits. Explanation. Properties within the California Coastal Commission's jurisdiction may require coastal development permits for construction or significant alterations. Question 7. Explain the complexities involved in a real estate transaction for a property located in a California fire hazard severity zone. A. Requirement for fire-resistant materials. B. Mandatory fire insurance. C. Disclosure of fire hazard severity. T. Implementation of fire prevention measures. Answer. C. Disclosure of fire hazard severity. Explanation. Sellers must disclose if a property is located in a designated fire hazard severity zone in California. Question 8. What are the specific challenges and requirements for converting a commercial building into residential units in downtown Los Angeles? A. Zoning regulations and permits. B. Environmental impact assessments. C. Historical preservation considerations. D. Earthquake retrofitting requirements. Answer. A. Zoning regulations and permits. Explanation. 
Converting a commercial building into residential units in downtown Los Angeles involves navigating zoning regulations and obtaining necessary permits. Question 9. A real estate agent in California is accused of violating the Fair Housing Act by steering. What are the potential legal consequences? A. Revocation of real estate license. B. Civil penalties and damages. C. Mandatory fair housing training. D. Criminal charges. Answer. B. Civil penalties and damages. Explanation. Steering violates the Fair Housing Act, and a real estate agent may face civil penalties and damages for such actions. Question 10. Discuss the legal considerations for a leaseback agreement in a commercial real estate transaction in California. A. Tax implications. B. Landlord's right to sublease. C. Tenant's property improvement rights. D. Duration of the leaseback period. Answer. D. Duration of the leaseback period. Explanation. In a leaseback agreement, the duration of the leaseback period is a crucial legal consideration, affecting both the seller, tenant, and buyer, landlordy. Question 11. How do the requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act, CE Hikuide, impact new real estate development projects? A. Mandatory green building certifications. B. Environmental impact assessments. C. Installation of renewable energy sources. D. Restrictions on land use. Answer. B. Environmental impact assessments. Explanation. CEQA requires developers to conduct environmental impact assessments for new projects to identify and mitigate adverse environmental effects. Question 12. What are the considerations and potential legal challenges in purchasing a property in a California historical district? A. Restrictions on property modifications. B. Mandatory property restoration. C. Special property tax rates. D. Approval from historical preservation boards. Answer. D. Approval from historical preservation boards. Explanation. Purchasing property in a historical district often requires approval from preservation boards for any modifications, posing legal challenges. Question 13. In California, what are the implications of selling a property under the Mills Act? A. Property tax reductions. B. Mandatory historical preservation. C. Restrictions on future property sales. D. Requirement for public access. Answer. A. Property tax reductions. Explanation. The Mills Act provides property tax reductions for owners who preserve and maintain historical properties. Question 14. How does the concept of community property affect real estate transactions in California during a divorce? A. Equal division of property. B. Assignment of property to one spouse. C. Sale of property and division of proceeds. D. Retention of property by primary caretaker. Answer. A. Equal division of property. Explanation. In California, community property laws generally require an equal division of property acquired during marriage in a divorce. Question 15. A property in California is subject to a mechanic's lion. Explain the implications for the sale of this property. A. The property cannot be sold. B. The line must be paid off at closing. C. Sale proceeds go to the line holder. D. Price reduction to cover the line. Answer. B. The line must be paid off at closing. Explanation. A mechanic's line on a property must typically be paid off at closing, affecting the sale proceeds and negotiations. Question 16. Discuss the legal complexities and steps involved in evicting a tenant from a rent control department in San Francisco. A. Just cause requirements. B. Mandatory relocation assistance. C. Rent control board approval. D. 60-day eviction notice. Answer. A. 
just cause requirements. Explanation. Evicting a tenant from a rent-controlled apartment in San Francisco involves meeting just cause requirements under local laws. Question 17. Explain the significance of transfer of development rights, TDAR, in urban real estate transactions in California. A. Tax benefits. B. Increased building density. C. Preservation of historical sites. D. Environmental conservation. Answer. B. Increased building density. Explanation. TDAR allows property owners to sell development rights to another property, often leading to increased building density in urban areas. Question 18. During a transaction, a buyer in California learns that the property is located in a Mellow Roost district. Explain the implications of this discovery for the buyer. A. Higher property taxes. B. Special assessments for community facilities. C. Restrictions on property modifications. D. Mandatory participation in HOA. Answer. B. Special assessments for community facilities. Explanation. Properties in Melarus districts are subject to special assessments to fund community facilities and services. Question 19. A property owner in California is interested in subdividing their large parcel of land. What are the key legal and regulatory considerations they must address? A. Zoning restrictions and permit requirements. B. Environmental impact assessments. C. Approval from neighboring property owners. D. Historical preservation considerations. Answer. A. Zoning restrictions and permit requirements. Explanation. Subdividing land in California involves navigating zoning restrictions and obtaining the necessary permits. Question 20. Explain the concept of property flipping and discuss the potential risks and rewards associated with it. A. Renovating properties for quick resale. B. Renting properties for short-term gains. C. Developing land for immediate sale. D. Purchasing foreclosed properties for resale. Answer. A. Renovating properties for quick resale. Explanation. Property flipping involves purchasing, renovating, and quickly reselling properties for profit, carrying both financial risks and potential rewards. Question 21. A couple is buying a property near a coastal area in California. What special considerations should they have regarding insurance and environmental factors? A. Flood insurance and tsunami risk. B. Earthquake insurance and landslide susceptibility. C. Fire insurance and drought conditions. D. Liability insurance and beach erosion. Answer. A. Flood insurance and tsunami risk. Explanation. In coastal areas of California, buyers should consider the need for flood insurance due to the risk of flooding and tsunamis. Question 22. What is a 1031 exchange, and how can it benefit real estate investors in California? A. A tax-deferred exchange of investment properties. B. A direct swap of residential properties. C. A government program for first-time homebuyers. D. A method for converting rental properties to commercial use. Answer. A a tax-deferred exchange of investment properties. Explanation. A 1031 exchange allows real estate investors in California to defer capital gains taxes by exchanging one investment property for another. Question 23. In a real estate contract, what does force majeure mean and how can it affect the agreement? A. A clause that allows for renegotiation of terms. B. A provision excusing parties from performance due to unforeseen events. C. A mandatory arbitration requirement. D. A fixed closing date regardless of circumstances. Answer. B. A provision excusing parties from performance due to unforeseen events. Explanation. Force majeure refers to a clause in real estate contracts that can excuse parties from fulfilling their obligations due to events beyond their control.
Question 24. A property owner wants to install solar panels on their home. What are the potential benefits, costs, and legal considerations in California? A. Increased property value, high installation costs, and HOI approvals. B. Reduced electricity bills, tax incentives, and building permits. C. Environmental impact, zoning restrictions, and increased insurance premiums. D. Maintenance requirements, decreased property value, and energy credits. Answer B. Reduced electricity bills, tax incentives, and building permits. Explanation Installing solar panels in California can lead to reduced electricity bills, potential tax incentives, and may require obtaining building permits. Question 25. Explain the concept of common interest developments, CIDs, and the role of homeowners associations, HOAs, within them. A. Shared property ownership managed by a board of directors. B. Co-op housing with members responsible for maintenance. C. Rental communities governed by a property management company. D. Gated communities with private security and amenities. Answer. A. Shared property ownership managed by a board of directors. Explanation. Common interest developments involve shared ownership of common areas, typically managed by a homeowners association and a board of directors. Question 26. A buyer is interested in a property with an existing solar lease. What should the buyer be aware of before proceeding with the purchase? A. The lease terms and transferability. B. The solar panel maintenance costs. C. The compatibility of the solar system with the property. D. The impact of the lease on property insurance. Answer. A. The lease terms and transferability. Explanation. Buyers should review the terms of the solar lease, including its duration, costs, and whether it can be transferred with the property sale. Question 27. What are the key considerations for a real estate professional when dealing with a property that has been stigmatized, such as one where a crime occurred? A. Legal obligation to disclose the event. B. Impact on property value and marketability. C. Potential psychological impact on buyers. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Real estate professionals must consider the legal disclosure requirements, impact on value, and potential buyer concerns for stigmatized properties. Question 28. Describe the process and importance of lead-based paint disclosure in California real estate transactions. A. Mandatory for all properties built before 1978. B. Required only for properties with known lead paint. C. Optional but recommended for older properties. D. Necessary for properties undergoing renovation. Answer. A. Mandatory for all properties built before 1978. Explanation. In California, sellers must disclose the presence of lead-based paint for properties built before 1978 due to health hazards. Question 29. A real estate investor is considering purchasing a property through a foreclosure auction. What are the key steps and considerations in this process? A. Researching property lines, attending the auction, and preparing financing. B. Obtaining a pre-approval letter, home inspection, and title insurance. C. Conducting a comparative market analysis, negotiating terms, and closing. D. Reviewing HOA documents, property appraisal, and hiring an attorney. Answer. A. Researching property lines, attending the auction, and preparing financing. Explanation. Buying a property through a foreclosure auction involves researching lines, attending the auction, and having financing ready. Question 30. Describe the legal process and implications for a property owner in California who discovers an ancient archaeological artifact on their land. A. Mandatory reporting to state authorities and potential excavation. B. Private ownership of the artifact with no legal obligations. C. Sale of the artifact with proceeds shared with the state. 
D. Permanent placement of the artifact in a museum. Answer. A. Mandatory reporting to state authorities and potential excavation. Explanation. Discovering an archaeological artifact in California requires reporting to state authorities, who may conduct an archaeological investigation. Question 31. Explain the rights and responsibilities of a property owner in California when their land is designated as a habitat for an endangered species. A. Restrictions on land use and development. B. Compensation from the government for land use limitations. C. Obligation to protect and preserve the habitat. D. Both A and C. Answer. D. Both A and C. Explanation. Designation as an endangered species habitat may restrict land use and development, and owners have an obligation to protect the habitat. Question 32. How does a conservation easement affect a property owner's rights and potential development in California? A. Limits future development to preserve natural resources. B. Requires property to be open to public access. C. Mandates sustainable building practices. D. Increases property taxes due to conservation status. Answer. A. Limits future development to preserve natural resources. Explanation. A conservation easement in California typically limits development on the property to preserve environmental or historical resources. Question 33. Discuss the impact of air rights in urban real estate development in a densely populated area of California. A. Allows for additional building height. B. Permits construction over public spaces. C. Enables multi-level property ownership. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Air rights can impact urban real estate by allowing additional building height, construction over public spaces, and multi-level property ownership. Question 34. What are the legal consequences for a real estate agent in California who fails to disclose a property's history of severe environmental contamination? A. License suspension or revocation. B. Civil liability for damages. C. Criminal charges. D, both A and B. Answer, D, both A and B. Explanation, failing to disclose severe environmental contamination can lead to license suspension or revocation and civil liability for a real estate agent. Question 35. In California, what are the challenges and legal considerations in converting a historic residential property into a commercial venue? A. Obtaining zoning variances and historical preservation approvals. B. Ensuring ADA compliance and fire safety. C. Managing increased traffic and parking requirements. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Converting a historic residential property to a commercial venue involves zoning, preservation, ADA compliance, and traffic considerations. Question 36. Explain the process for contesting a property tax assessment in California and the basis for such a contest. A. Filing an appeal with the county assessor's office. B. Providing evidence of overvaluation. C. Requesting a hearing before the assessment appeals board. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Contesting a property tax assessment involves filing an appeal, providing evidence, and potentially a hearing before the appeals board. Question 37. Describe the legal considerations for a California property owner facing a nuisance claim due to noise from their commercial operation. A. Potential lawsuits for disturbance. B. Requirement to implement noise reduction measures. C possible zoning violation consequences. D, all of the above. Answer, D, all of the above. Explanation, 
Facing a nuisance claim can involve lawsuits, noise reduction requirements, and zoning violation consequences. Question 38. How does California's Ellis Act impact landlords and tenants in the context of converting rental units into condominiums? A. Allows landlords to evict tenants for the conversion. B. Requires tenant relocation assistance. C. Prohibits such conversions entirely. D. Both A and B. Answer. D. Both A and B. Explanation. The Ellis Act allows landlords to evict tenants for conversions but requires providing relocation assistance to tenants. Question 39. Explain the legal and financial implications for a homeowner in California who wishes to place their property into a living trust. A. Avoids probate, retains control during lifetime, and potential tax benefits. B. Transfers ownership to a trustee, incurs gift taxes, and loss of control. C. Requires court approval, increases property taxes, and limits sale options. D. Simplifies estate planning, reduces property value, and requires beneficiary consent. Answer. A. Avoids probate, retains control during lifetime, and potential tax benefits. Explanation. Placing property in a living trust can avoid probate, allow control during the owner's lifetime, and offer tax benefits. Question 40. Discuss the process and implications of a lot line adjustment between two neighboring properties in California. A. Simplified process with minimal paperwork. B. Requires a survey and approval from local planning authorities. C. Automatically alters property taxes and assessments. D. Involves easement negotiations and HOI approvals. Answer. B. Requires a survey and approval from local planning authorities. Explanation. A lot line adjustment typically involves a survey and must be approved by local planning authorities. Question 41. In California, what are the implications of purchasing a property under a community land trust model? A. Affordable housing option with resale restrictions. B. Ownership of the building but not the land. C. Leasehold interest with periodic ground rent payments. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Purchasing under a community land trust model often involves affordable housing options, owning the building but not the land and leasehold interest with ground rent. Question 42. Explain how transferable development rights, TDAR, can be used in real estate development in California. A. Allows higher density building in exchange for preserving open space. B. Transfers property tax obligations to a new developer. C. Enables the transfer of zoning permissions from one property to another. D. Both A and C. Answer. D. Both A and C. Explanation. Transferable development rights allow for higher density development in exchange for preserving open spaces and can enable the transfer of zoning rights. Question 43. Describe the legal requirements and process for a property owner in California seeking to remove a historic designation from their property. A. Application to the local historical commission. B. Proving the designation was made in error. C. Obtaining approval from the State Preservation Office. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Removing a historic designation involves applying to the Historical Commission, proving an error in designation, and possibly state approval. Question 44. Discuss the complexities and legal considerations of handling a cloud on title in a California real estate transaction. A resolving outstanding lines or disputes, b. obtaining a quitclaim deed from previous owners, c. legal action to clear the title, d. all of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Addressing a cloud on title can involve resolving lines, obtaining quitclaim deeds, and legal action to clear the title. 
Question 45. Explain the legal implications and steps required for subdividing a large parcel of agricultural land in California. A. Compliance with local zoning laws and environmental regulations. B. Obtaining approval from the Agricultural Commission. C. Conducting a land survey and creating a subdivision map. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Subdividing agricultural land requires compliance with zoning laws, environmental regulations, agricultural commission approval, land surveys, and subdivision maps. Question 46. In California, what are the legal considerations and risks associated with buying a property at a tax line sale? A. Potential for outstanding debts or lions on the property. B. Possibility of a redemption period for the original owner. C. Requirement to pay all delinquent taxes and penalties. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Buying at a tax lion sale may involve risks like existing debts, a redemption period for the original owner, and paying delinquent taxes. Question 47. Discuss the process and implications for a real estate developer in California seeking to build in a very high fire hazard severity zone. A. Adherence to strict building codes and fire safety regulations. B. Mandatory fire risk assessments and mitigation plans. C. Obtaining special permits from local fire authorities. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Developing in a high fire hazard zone requires strict code compliance, fire risk assessments, mitigation plans, and special permits. Question 48. How does the California Coastal Act affect the rights of property owners adjacent to public beaches? A. Restricts certain types of development near the coastline. B. Requires public access pathways through private property. C. Imposes additional environmental impact assessments. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. The California Coastal Act restricts coastal development, may require public access through private property, and imposes environmental assessments. Question 49. Describe the legal challenges and potential resolutions in a dispute over water rights for a property in California. A. Negotiating with neighboring property owners. B. Seeking a court adjudication of rights. C. Applying for a new water permit. T. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Resolving water rights disputes may involve negotiations, court adjudications, and applying for new permits. Question 50. A developer in California plans to convert a historical building into a boutique hotel. What challenges and legal requirements will the developer face? A. Adhering to historic preservation standards. B. Obtaining special use permits. C. Ensuring ADA compliance. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Converting a historic building requires adherence to preservation standards, obtaining special permits, and ensuring ADA compliance. Question 51. After a severe drought, a property owner in California is informed that their groundwater use must be limited. What are the legal implications of this for the property owner, especially if they rely on this water source for agricultural purposes? A. Requirement to find alternative water sources. B. Potential for legal disputes with neighboring property owners. C. Possible reduction in property value. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Limitations on groundwater use may lead to finding alternative sources, disputes with neighbors, and a potential reduction in property value. Question 52. A real estate agent in California discovers that a listed property was the site of a major crime a year ago. How should the agent handle this information with potential buyers? 
A. Disclose the information to all potential buyers. B. Keep the information confidential. C. Disclose only if asked by the buyer. D. Disclose if the crime affects the physical condition of the property. Answer. A. Disclose the information to all potential buyers. Explanation. California law requires the disclosure of a major crime on the property to all potential buyers. Question 53. During a property inspection in California, a significant earthquake fault is discovered on the land. What disclosure obligations does the seller have, and how might this affect the property's value and insurability? A. Must disclose the fault to potential buyers. B. Might face a decrease in property value. C. Could encounter higher insurance premiums. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Discovering an earthquake fault requires disclosure, may decrease value, and could lead to higher insurance costs. Question 54. A couple is buying a house in California with an unpermitted in-law unit. What are the potential legal and financial risks they face, and how can these be mitigated? A. Facing fines for code violations. B. Requirement to obtain permits retroactively. C. Possible demolition of the unpermitted unit. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Buying with an unpermitted unit can lead to fines, the need for retroactive permits, and potential demolition. Question 55. A California property owner wants to build an extension on their home, but it would encroach onto a public utility easement. What steps should the owner take to legally proceed with their plans? A. Obtain a variance from the local planning department. B. Negotiate an easement release or modification with the utility company. C. Ensure the extension doesn't interfere with the easement. D. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Building on an easement requires a variance, negotiating with the utility company, and ensuring no interference. Question 56. In a California coastal town, residents are opposing a new housing development project citing environmental concerns. What legal processes must the developer go through to address these concerns and proceed with the project? A. Conduct an environmental impact report, EIR. B. Obtain approval from the California Coastal Commission. C. Address public comments and concerns. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Addressing environmental concerns involves an EIR, Coastal Commission approval, and addressing public comments. Question 57. A homeowner in a historic district of San Francisco wants to renovate their home, but their plans are not in compliance with the local historic preservation guidelines. What are their options? A. Modify the plans to comply with the guidelines. B. Seek a variance or exception from the local preservation board. C. Abandon the renovation plans. D. Both A and B. Answer. D both A and B. Explanation. Renovating in a historic district requires modifying plans for compliance or seeking a variance. Question 58. A real estate investor in California purchases a property at an auction only to discover there are existing tenants with a long-term lease. What are the investor's rights and responsibilities in this situation? A. Honor the existing lease until its expiration. B. Negotiate an early termination of the lease. C. Evict the tenants immediately. D. A and B. Answer. D. A and B. Explanation. Investors must honor existing leases but can negotiate early termination. Question 59. After buying a home in California, a buyer finds out that their property is part of a landslide zone, which was not disclosed by the seller. What legal recourse does the buyer have? A. File a lawsuit for non-disclosure. B. Seek damages for the diminished value of the property. C. Request a rescission of the sale. 
D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Non-disclosure of a landslide zone can lead to legal action, seeking damages or rescinding the sale. Question 60. A real estate broker in California is accused of misrepresenting the square footage of a property. What consequences might the broker face, and how can buyers protect themselves from such misrepresentations? A. License suspension or revocation. B. Civil liability for damages. C. Fines and penalties. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Misrepresenting square footage can lead to license issues, liability for damages, and fines. Question 61. In California, what are the implications of purchasing a property under a community land trust model? A. Long-term affordability but limited equity growth. B. Ownership of the building but not the land. C. Possible restrictions on resale value. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Purchasing under a community land trust often involves owning the building but not the land, long-term affordability, and restrictions on resale value to maintain affordability. Question 62. Explain how transferable development rights, TDDR, can be used in real estate development in California. A. Allows developers to purchase additional building rights from other property owners. B. Used to preserve historic or natural areas by transferring development potential. C. Can increase building density in designated areas. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. TDRs allow developers to purchase additional building rights helping preserve certain areas while concentrating development in others. Question 63. Describe the legal requirements and process for a property owner in California seeking to remove a historic designation from their property. A. Application to the local historic preservation office. B. Demonstrating the designation is causing undue hardship. C. Approval from the California Office of Historic Preservation. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Removing a historic designation requires applying to preservation offices and proving undue hardship, subject to state approval. Question 64. Discuss the complexities and legal considerations of handling a cloud on title in a California real estate transaction. A. Resolving any disputes or claims affecting the title. B. Obtaining releases or satisfactions of lines. C. Possible court action to clear the title. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Addressing a cloud on title may involve resolving disputes, clearing lines, and legal action to ensure a clear title. Question 65. Explain the legal implications and steps required for subdividing a large parcel of agricultural land in California. A. Meeting local zoning and land use regulations. B. Obtaining subdivision approvals from relevant authorities. C. Conducting environmental impact studies. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Subdividing agricultural land requires compliance with zoning regulations, obtaining necessary approvals, and environmental impact assessments. Question 66. In California, what are the legal considerations and risks associated with buying a property at a tax line sale? A. Potential for outstanding debts or lions on the property. B. Risk of property not being vacated by the previous owner. C. Possibility of a redemption period for the original owner. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Buying at a tax line sale can involve risks like existing debts, redemption periods, and issues with property vacancy. Question 67. 
discuss the process and implications for a real estate developer in California seeking to build in a very high fire hazard severity zone. A. Adherence to strict fire safety and building codes. B. Requirement for fire risk assessments and mitigation plans. C. Possible restrictions on types of materials and landscaping. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Developing in a high fire hazard zone requires complying with fire safety codes, conducting risk assessments, and using fire-resistant materials. Question 68. How does the California Coastal Act affect the rights of property owners adjacent to public beaches? A. May limit development and require Coastal Commission approval. B. Requires maintaining public access to the beach. C. Imposes specific environmental standards. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. The Coastal Act can limit development, require maintaining public beach access, and impose environmental standards. Question 69. Describe the legal challenges and potential resolutions in a dispute over water rights for a property in California. A. Negotiation or mediation with other water rights holders. B. Legal action to establish or defend water rights. C. Seeking a ruling from the State Water Resources Control Board. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Resolving water rights disputes can involve negotiations, legal actions, and seeking rulings from state authorities. Question 70. A developer in California plans to convert a historical building into a boutique hotel. What challenges and legal requirements will the developer face? A. Compliance with historic preservation standards. B. Obtaining necessary permits and approvals. C. Ensuring modern building codes are met while preserving historical aspects. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Converting a historic building involves meeting preservation standards, obtaining permits, and complying with modern codes. Question 71. After a severe drought, a property owner in California is informed that their groundwater use must be limited. What are the legal implications of this for the property owner, especially if they rely on this water source for agricultural purposes? A. May need to reduce or modify water usage. B. Could face legal action for non-compliance. C. Might need to invest in alternative water sources. T. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Groundwater limitations can require usage adjustments, legal compliance, and possibly investing in alternative sources. Question 72. A real estate agent in California discovers that a listed property was the site of a major crime a year ago. How should the agent handle this information with potential buyers? A. Disclose the information to all potential buyers. B. Keep the information confidential. C. Disclose only if asked by the buyer. D. Disclose if the crime affects the physical condition of the property. Answer. A. Disclose the information to all potential buyers. Explanation. California law requires the disclosure of a major crime on the property to all potential buyers. Question 73. During a property inspection in California, a significant earthquake fault is discovered on the land. What disclosure obligations does the seller have, and how might this affect the property's value and insurability? A. Must disclose the fault to potential buyers. B. Might face a decrease in property value. C. Could encounter higher insurance premiums. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Discovering an earthquake fault requires disclosure, may decrease value, and could lead to higher insurance costs. Question 74. A couple is buying a house in California with an unpermitted in-law unit. What are the potential legal and financial risks they face, and how can these be mitigated? A. 
facing fines for code violations. B. Requirement to obtain permits retroactively. C. Possible demolition of the unpermitted unit. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Buying with an unpermitted unit can lead to fines, the need for retroactive permits, and potential demolition. Question 75. A California property owner wants to build an extension on their home, but it would encroach onto a public utility easement. What steps should the owner take to legally proceed with their plans? A. Obtain a variance from the local planning department. B. Negotiate an easement release or modification with the utility company. C. Ensure the extension doesn't interfere with the easement. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Explanation. Building on an easement requires a variance, negotiating with the utility company, and ensuring no interference.